This is 2019, Amy 1, problem number 14. And here's a view of this number theory problem. Uh, we would like to find the least odd prime factor of the following expression, 2019 raised to the 8 power uh, plus 1. Uh, this can also be reformulated in the language of modular arithmetic in the sense that because we want to find a factor, um, so let's call this factor, well, I can, I think, call it P because that's a prime factor, right? So P, and besides, it's odd, so P is definitely greater than 2. So what we want is this expression, 2019 raised to the 8 power plus 1, being congruent to 0 in mod P. Got distracted for a second. Okay, so uh, this would uh, simply imply, if you will, uh, 2019 raised to the 8 power is congruent to minus 1 in mod uh, modulo p, basically. And that's nice because now I can just square both sides, implying that 2019 raised to the 16th power is simply congruent to minus 1 squared, uh, which is just a 1 modulo p. Aha! Okay, so, uh, so that would imply that the order, let me write that down, the order of 2019 modulo p, modulo p, uh, divides 16. But wait, at the same time we know that, um, well, it cannot, uh, uh, it cannot be 8 as well, look at that, because 2019 raised to the 8 power is just minus 1. So really, uh, the order of uh, 2019 modulo p has got to be 16 itself, right? Does that make sense? So, but because, okay, so let's write, and yet, uh, 2019 raised to the 8 power um, is not congruent to 1, uh, so combining these two, this implies the order of uh, 2019 modulo p, modulo p is simply equal to 16. Let me just remind you what I mean by the order of an uh, integer modulo p. So basically when I say the order, say of a, modulo any number, so say for instance modulo p, what I really mean is uh, what power, the smallest power of a that will make it congruent to 1 modulo p. And so uh, where t is smallest positive power, smallest positive integer. Now this concept has a lot of implication. One of the implications is that if there is another number uh, raised to the kth power uh, which also makes it congruent to 1 modulo p then it must be, so if that's the case, then it must be that our number, the order of a modulo p, uh, so this t better divides k basically, t divides k um, so that, that's, that's a very powerful result. For instance, uh, in just a minute, I will just show that, uh, for instance, for, by Fermat's little theorem, uh, we already know that a raised to the power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo p, right? But notice that the order of a number, uh, so the order is the smallest power, and besides, if there's another number which makes it congruent to 1, the order better divides this p minus 1, right? So, But we will just see it in just a minute. So I just wanted to remind you of this fact, basically. Okay, so uh, let me just go ahead and delete all this, and uh, let's get back to our problem. So I highly recommend you review this uh, subject, uh, order of an integer modulo uh, modulo. Um, any modulo basically, it doesn't have to be a prime. Um, and yeah, so back to our question. Uh, recall also what? Uh, Euler's theorem, right? So Euler, uh, Euler's theorem, or if you will, in this case, because we have modulo PP is a, a prime, um, or alternatively, you can also recall Fermat's le uh, little theorem, Fermat's uh, little theorem. And for the proof of Fermat's little theorem, uh, you can check uh, my playlist, number theory playlist. I think uh, I have a nice combinatorial argument for that. But by this, we already know that a to the power p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p, modulo p. So what it means is that p minus 1 
should be divisible by 16, right? Because the order of a number uh, is just the smallest uh, exponent that will make it congruent to 1. If p minus 1, uh, raising it to the p minus 1 power also make it congruent to 1, it must be that p minus 1 uh, is, um, uh, is divisible by 16. So therefore, what it implies, this implies... Um, 16 divides uh, p minus 1 or again in the language of uh, modular arithmetic what it means is that uh, p minus 1 is congruent to 0 modulo uh, modulo 16 modulo 16 or um, or again I can just move things a little bit p is uh, congruent to 1 modulo 16 aha and that's it. So now we are ready to calculate what P can be. Uh, all we need is, uh, if you are, would like, we can change this expression into an algebraic one. So what it means is that uh, P is congruent to 1 modulo 16. So basically, so therefore, uh, P would look like this. So P is equal to 1 plus 16 times K. Indeed, if you divide P by 16, the second part, this part is divisible by 16, it will vanish, and there, so we will have a remainder of 1. Perfect. So P has this form, uh, 1 plus 16K uh, for all K, right? So for all K, and I can just focus my attention uh, on, so for all K, starting from 0, 1, all the way up to infinity. So now it's time to test different values of K. Obviously, I don't have to test 0, so we can start by with 1. So if P, uh, so if K, I should say, is equal to 1, then uh, p would be 1 plus 16 times 1, which is 17, and um, that would, uh, and then let's see if that works, basically, so, and uh, let's check that, so we need uh, 2000, we need to inspect 2019 raised to the 8 power plus 1, modulo 17, so that's just congruent to, so 2019, if you divide it by 17, the remainder would be 13, so this is simply 13 raised to the 8 power plus 1. And that's simply uh, what? A 13, well, we can write it as 13 squared raised to the 4th power plus 1, which is 13 squared, so 169 raised to the 4th power plus 1. Again, we are in modulo 17, remember. Uh, modulo 17, so this is just a minus 1. So this is just minus 1 raised to the power 4 plus 1, which is just minus 1 square square. So which is just 1 square plus 1, which is just congruent to 2 modulo 17. But we expected it to be 0, right? Our goal is to show that it is a 0, not a 2. So this won't work. So next we can try uh, k equals 2. Again, in this expression, so this is our main expression. So that would imply p is equal to 1 plus 16 times 2, oops, which is 32, 33. Oh, this one is not a prime, not prime. So we can just skip this one. k equals 3, remember p was a prime, an odd prime. 1 plus 16 times 3, 48, 49. Again, not a prime. k equals 4. So this is in the spirit of uh, Amy, right? So you keep doing these silly calculations. This is not a prime. K equals 5. P equals 1 plus 16 times 5. 80, 81. Not a prime. Keep going. Okay, let's move it here. Uh, K equals 6. That would imply P is equal to 1 plus 16 times 6, 96, 97. Okay, good. So 97 is an odd prime. We can go ahead and check if it works. So 2019 raised to the 8 power plus 1 modulo, modulo 97. So if you divide 2019 by 97, uh, I think the remainder comes out as 79 raised to the 8 power plus 1. But 79 is simply minus 18. Uh, 8 power plus 1. I can go ahead and split this into two parts. Minus 18 squared, which is 324, raised to the fourth power. Huh? I split that 8 as 2 times 4, and I first took the square, and then, uh, so plus 1. 324 uh, divided by 97, modulo 97 is uh, 194, uh, 291, 9, 33. That one is congruent to 33 uh, raised to the fourth power plus 1. 33 square square. 33 square is 1089. And 108, okay, let's write it like that. 1089 square plus 1. 1089 divided by 97 is 22. 
22 square plus 1. 22 square is uh, 21, 400, 441, 484. And 484, finally, um, I think is 485, right? So 97 times 5 is 485. So this is just minus 1. So this is congruent to minus 1. Uh, and plus 1, still a plus 1 remains. And that's finally congruent to 0, modulo 97. So we don't have to go further. Why not? Because the question clearly says the least one. 17 didn't work. The next one was 97. And indeed, 97 gives us the desired result. And that solves uh, this pretty nice problem.